each year on the first Sunday of Lent, the gospel describes what happened when Christ went into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil. St. Matthew's account fills 11 verses of his gospel. St. Luke's account, on the other hand, stretches to 12 verses. St. Mark, though, with his customary succinctness, manages to get his message across in a mere two verses. The key difference between the accounts is that St. Matthew and St. Luke deal with the particular temptations the devil put before the Lord, as well as the Lord's reaction to them. St. Mark, however, ignores this entirely and prefers instead to focus on the simple fact that our Lord was tempted, layering the sentence he uses to describe this with a rich depth of meaning. So the question before us today is, what does the simple fact of the temptations tell us over and above the particular temptations themselves? Well, we can begin by noticing that Christ was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. That might strike us as a little odd. Christ was divine after all, just as the Holy Spirit was. Nevertheless, the Greek verb used in the text, ekbalai, is used elsewhere in the Gospels to convey a strong sense of command as, for example, when Christ himself casts out demons. So there's a command element to this driven. So we can ask, how could the Holy Spirit drive Christ anywhere? Well, in his gloss on the text, St. John Chrysostom suggests it emphasizes the work of divine providence. Christ is driven by the Holy Spirit in the sense of submitting obediently to divine providence and to the will of his Father. St. Augustine, on the other hand, while not disagreeing with Chrysostom, adds further that Christ overcame this devil not by the power of God, but by righteousness, right, not might, so to speak. Accordingly, when Christ is driven by the Holy Spirit, he is allowing himself, or rather his human nature, to be put to the test. And if we put the two explanations together, then we get a sense of the importance of Christ's human nature for our salvation. Yes, the resurrection and the bestowal of grace Christ's death merited will be realized through a mighty act of divine power. Nevertheless, we can't lose sight of the role of Christ's human nature in our salvation. Christ lived a truly human life under grace, and it is a perfect example for us at all times of the year, but most especially during Lent. Next, we might pick up the location of our Lord's temptations, the wilderness. Here we need to recall that when Adam was expelled from the garden of paradise, he went from there into the wilderness. And because Adam's fall was a result of the devil's temptation, causing human beings to live apart from God as one of its consequences, then the image of the wilderness can act as a metaphor for Adam's fall, its cause, and its consequences. And the gospel is getting at this when it tells us Jesus went into the wilderness. Our Lord deliberately went into the wilderness to seek out and to confront the cause and the consequences of Adam's fall. In fact, there's a marvelous symmetry at work in our Lord's mission. Our Lord had come into the world to destroy the effects of sin in creation and to make possible eternal life with God. And he begins that task 
by confronting Adam's failure head on in the very place where the cause of that failure, the devil, was to be found, namely the wilderness. Finally, we have the length of Christ's stay in the wilderness, 40 days, which mirrors our own period of Lent. Just as Christ's victory in the wilderness prefigured his later victory on the cross, so too are victories during Lent, however modest they might be, they can prefigure the final victory at the end of our lives should we be fortunate enough to join Christ in paradise. Today, then, as we embark on our Lenten journey, let us pray that we will avail of the Lord's example to guide us on the way.